The SpaceX Starship program is all about learning by doing. Every test, even if it ends in failure, brings SpaceX closer to its goal of building a fully reusable spacecraft that will change space travel and help make Mars colonization a reality. One of the biggest challenges SpaceX faces is building a strong and reliable thermal protection system. Heat shields are essential because they protect the spacecraft during re-entry, where temperatures skyrocket to extreme levels. Traditionally, ceramic heat shields have been used, but SpaceX is moving in a new direction by using metallic heat shields. It's a bold approach that could completely change how spacecraft handle intense heat. The old heat shield systems, like those on NASA's Space Shuttle, worked but came with serious problems. The shuttle used ceramic tiles, which were fragile, expensive, and time-consuming to maintain. Each shuttle had over 24,000 tiles, and every single one was unique in size and shape. After every mission, engineers had to inspect, repair, and replace damaged tiles. This process took months and required huge amounts of time and money. The tiles were also prone to damage from small debris or even tiny cracks, making them a headache to manage. SpaceX wants something far better. For Starship to be reusable, its heat shield needs to be tough, reliable, and easy to repair. That's why they are now testing metallic heat shields made from advanced alloys. These shields can handle extreme temperatures without breaking apart and are designed to be used over and over again with minimal maintenance. During Flight 5, SpaceX tested aluminum-coated heat shields. The results weren't great. The shields melted during re-entry, and the stainless steel hull underneath became discolored from the heat. This showed that the aluminum coating just couldn't handle the intense temperatures. In Flight 6, SpaceX decided to push the test even further. On Ship 31, they removed parts of the heat shield on purpose to see what would happen. As the spacecraft came back into the atmosphere, temperatures in the unprotected areas went over 600 degrees Celsius, enough to melt aluminum. The surface of the ship turned a bluish color because the stainless steel reacted with the oxygen in the air. This process, called oxidation, forms a protective chromium oxide layer on the steel's surface, which helps shield it from further heat damage. The Starship hull is made from 304L stainless steel, which contains high levels of chromium and nickel. It's built to handle extreme conditions, but the test made it clear that a stronger heat shield is needed for reusability. That's where metallic heat shields come in. Unlike ceramic tiles, metallic shields are far more durable and can survive multiple re-entry cycles with minimal wear and tear. They also need much less maintenance. SpaceX is designing these shields to have a uniform size and shape across the spacecraft, which makes production and repairs much easier. By simplifying the design, SpaceX can produce the shields faster, cheaper, and with better quality control. Liquid cooling isn't new. It has been successfully used in rocket engines and hypersonic vehicles, but testing it on a spacecraft's heat shield brings new challenges. Rocket engines use liquid cooling in controlled internal environments where coolant flows over surfaces to absorb heat and carry it away. However, applying this method to a spacecraft's heat shield during re-entry is far more difficult. The heat shield is exposed to extreme temperatures, rapid pressure changes, and violent airflow, which can disrupt the coolant flow and cause uneven cooling. There is also the risk of the coolant freezing, evaporating too quickly, or creating blockages, all of which could make the system fail. These challenges, combined with the scale of a spacecraft like Starship, are why liquid cooling hasn't been seriously tested for this purpose before. SpaceX is pushing this technology further than anyone has, aiming to make it work reliably under these extreme conditions. Traditionally, water has been the preferred coolant because it's cheap, widely available, and absorbs a lot of heat. But SpaceX is using methane instead because it has thermal properties better suited for the extreme temperature Starship faces during re-entry. Methane remains stable at very high temperatures, which means it doesn't evaporate as quickly as water when exposed to extreme heat. This stability is important because it allows methane to absorb and transfer heat more efficiently without breaking down or freezing. 
Methane is also lighter and less viscous than water, meaning it flows more smoothly through the cooling system, reducing the chances of blockages. On top of that, methane is already carried as Starship's fuel, so using it for cooling eliminates the need for extra water storage, which would add weight to the spacecraft. These combined benefits make methane a better choice for handling the intense thermal environment of atmospheric re-entry. According to Musk, methane is better suited for the extreme temperatures Starship faces during re-entry because of its thermal properties. There are still challenges with liquid cooling, though. One big problem is something called snap freeze. This happens when coolant evaporates so quickly that the remaining liquid freezes instantly. If that happens inside the cooling system, it could cause blockages and make the whole system fail. SpaceX is carefully designing the system to prevent this, ensuring the coolant flows smoothly throughout re-entry. SpaceX's work on the heat shield hasn't come from nowhere. They learned a lot from NASA's space shuttle program, which also pushed the boundaries of heat shield design. The shuttle's tiles were made from silicon and aluminum oxide and coated with borosilicate glass. These materials worked well, but were extremely fragile and hard to maintain. Starship's tiles, on the other hand, are designed to be more efficient. Most of them are the same size and shape, except for a few custom tiles near the nose cone and edges. This makes production and repairs much faster and easier. If you've ever seen Starship re-enter the atmosphere, you've probably noticed the bright blue plasma glow surrounding it. That's caused by the borosilicate coating, which burns with a blue flame during re-entry. Borosilicate is resistant to thermal shock, meaning it won't crack or warp under sudden temperature changes. It's a key part of Starship's design. Currently, SpaceX finds itself embroiled in a heated dispute with the California Coastal Commission over its operations at Vandenberg Space Base. The Space Force has proposed increasing the number of Falcon 9 launches from Vandenberg from 36 to 50 per year. Despite this, the California Coastal Commission has rejected a proposal to allow more rocket launches from the site. The decision has been criticized for being politically motivated as some commissioners openly expressed personal disagreements with Musk's political views. For example, one commissioner accused Musk of prioritizing profit over environmental concerns and referenced his controversial tweets during the discussion. Observers believe that California's political climate may have played a role in the commission's decision. California is predominantly a democratic state. While Musk has recently shown support for Republican figures, including former President Donald Trump. In 2024, Musk announced his political shift toward the Republican Party and endorsed Trump for the presidential election. He also became a significant Republican donor, contributing approximately $118 million to support Trump's campaign through America PAC. Musk has also been critical of California's policies, leading to public disputes with state officials. He has described California as the land of over-regulation, over-litigation, over-taxation, and in 2021, he moved Tesla's headquarters from California to Texas, citing regulatory challenges. Additionally, Musk has criticized California's educational policies, particularly a law that restricts schools from informing parents about their children's gender identity changes. He referred to this legislation as the final straw and announced plans to move SpaceX's headquarters from California to Texas in response. So, the rejection of SpaceX's proposal appears to be influenced by a combination of political disagreements and personal biases against Musk. Musk responded by filing a federal lawsuit against the commission, accusing it of political bias and overreach. The lawsuit aims to overturn the commission's decision and secure SpaceX's ability to continue launching rockets from Vandenberg. While the legal battle unfolds, Musk is also preparing for the possibility of shifting more launches to Florida. Florida has long been a hub for space exploration, and its political climate is far more welcoming to SpaceX. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you in the next one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated with all things SpaceX and Starship. See you next time.